Well, hi there. Welcome back. Um, this is still the AM show. My name is Anima Animado, and I'll be doing this alone um, and perhaps with a few surprise guests over the next few weeks. Israel is um, away on leave, so you have just me, all me, um, but I can assure you I'm more than enough. And of course, um, I'm not going to say anything more than that, unless I'm going to get myself in trouble. Um, so we're going to get into the newspapers this morning. Let's start with a daily graphic. And um, wow, the banner headline, as is expected, uncertainty over the 2022 budget, heated debate expected tomorrow. So tomorrow, November 30th, the House will go back um, to continue their deliberations over the budget. But there is a lot of uncertainty after one side of the House voted to reject the budget last Friday. So tomorrow, the NPP majority side of the House is hoping to overturn the verdict, which they have described as unconstitutional, um, because it was just the NDC that voted. You're asking why it was just the NDC that voted? Well, because the majority walked out. Um, the minority side remained in the House um, after the majority had walked out of the floor during the process to approve the budget last Friday. Now, there are lots of issues that have been raised about um, the legality of this. You know, we have um, seen, according to the Constitution, Article 104, that you need a majority of 138 for something to actually go through. And the argument is that there were not 138 members of Parliament in Parliament for that to be able to go through. Um, so we'll be discussing that this morning, um, the legality of it, what it means for the economy, you know, to have our budget delayed or have our budget not approved. Now, you remember that this has only happened one time before and happened in um, Liman's government where, you know, the budget was disapproved, rejected by parliament. And he had to go back and kind of rework it so that the budget was something that the parliament was happy with. Um, it is said that he actually said at one point that he was not interested in going back and forth and arguing over a budget which clearly, you know, half of, of parliament didn't approve or didn't want to go through. And so he reworked it. So we're going to look out to see um, what happens tomorrow and also if there's going to be a reworking of the budget, especially um, the e-levy, which we've been told is, is 1.75 on your digital transactions. And the minority have argued that if you actually put it all together, it comes up to about 3.75 um, and will affect our drive to go digital as a nation and will also affect the poor poorer people in society who really use a lot of um, Momo transactions. Um, we all do. So that's that's something to really look out for. We'll have that conversation in depth um, a little later on in the show. And of course, tomorrow we'll see what happens and um, when Parliament resumes. OK, so Omicron COVID-19 variant spreads. I'm sure you've been following that story as well. So Omicron is a new variant um, of the COVID-19. It was discovered um, I think November 11th or November 9th, one of them. So just a couple of weeks ago. Uh, but new cases have been detected around the world. Two cases in Australia as more countries try to seal themselves off by imposing travel restrictions. It was first discovered in South Africa. Um, now recorded in the Netherlands, Denmark, Belgium, Botswana, Germany, Hong Kong, Israel, Italy and the United Kingdom. It's a variant of concern. Um, and this is what the WHO has said, um, that it might be able to resist vaccines and prolong the nearly two-year um, COVID-19 pandemic. It's also said to be potentially more contagious than previous variants, but experts don't know yet. Um, and that's the thing with every new variant that comes out, you know. You're not sure how it's going to, what it's going to look like, if it's going to be more contagious, if it's going to be more deadly. And I think the biggest question right now is if the vaccine, the vaccine that we have is going to be able to offer some sort of protection against Omicron. Um, so there have been stories up and down. If you're on social media, then you saw um, the Botswana health minister, who sort of intimated that, you know, some diplomats um, had, um, had brought Omicron into the country into Botswana and had returned to their country. And so restrictions should be spread across West Africa um, because apparently it came from West Africa. So lots of information going round. I think the best thing that you can do for yourself and for your family right now is remember that if you wear your mask and you wash your hands and you physically distance, you should be okay. 
So let's, you know, tighten up those measures. I'm sure foremost forefront in a lot of people's minds is also how this will affect the 150,000 people um, that we were expecting in Ghana for Christmas, right? Um, but if, if the, some countries are already kind of locking down and putting travel restrictions, then definitely it's going to be affected. So we'll have that conversation as well later on in the week. What measures are we going to put in place um, against the you know, Christmas squad? 150,000, that's the number we were expecting. So with this new variant, how is that going to be affected? Let me continue with some of the other stories. U.S. readies fight against Omicron. Omicron, sorry, but no lockdowns yet. So Americans should be prepared to fight the spread of the new COVID-19 variant. But it's too soon to say what actions are needed, including possible mandates or lockdowns um, by the United States. That's Dr. Anthony Fauci um, speaking. UK institutes measures against new variants. So um, that's what's happening in the UK. Boris Johnson has unveiled new measures to, to try to, to stop the spread. So now anyone who enters the United Kingdom is going to take a PCR test. By the end of the second day after their arrival and self-isolate until they have a negative um, result. So I'm sure we'll be seeing more of that across different countries as the week progresses. Okay, let's stay with the daily graphic this morning. Okay, looks like the aftermath of the Black Friday sales. There's um, still a lot of, of, um, of sales going on. Leave pregnant BEC candidates alone. Ah, oh, boy, boy, boy. Okay, um, this this is a piece by Efia Ejapama Ofosu. She talks about what it must be like writing your BECE and being pregnant and the stigma and how people look at you and all of that. Um, but yeah, I'm not. I don't know how much we've thought about that and how how the girls manage with that. But um, this is called Leave Pregnant BEC Candidates Alone. It's on page twelve of the Daily Graphic, so you might want to check it out. Okay, so more sales. Um, December has been declared COVID-19 vaccination month. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, so the Ministry of Health has declared December vaccination month to ensure the implementation of mandatory vaccination policy from January next year. So the policy for mandatory vaccination will start with selected groups of people and patrons of selected events. Okay, so you remember that we discussed, like, if you're going to go to an event or something, at some point you're going to have to see... Um, uh, a COVID-19 vaccine card. So I guess we're kind of upping the drive this month so that we can start to do that at some point. It's kind of like the um, Ghana card, isn't it? Can't really do anything without your Ghana card. It uh, looks like very soon it's going to be can't really do anything without your COVID-19 um, vaccination card. But if you haven't been vaccinated, do take a minute and get vaccinated. You pop by Joy FM, actually, because we're doing a vaccination drive out front. Um, so on your way to work or when you're off to drop the kids at school, um, just pop by, you know, and, and, and get it done. Okay, page 17, there's a collection of opinions, budgets, brouhaha. Um, different, different, different opinions, quite interesting. Okay, rally behind um, governments to get the budget approved. That's Dr. Awal, of course. I mean, he's in government. So <laughs> I wouldn't expect him to say that, you know, don't rally around government to get it approved. Okay, so there's um, some school, there's some school um, application forms that are out as well. So you definitely want to get that daily graphic this morning. Um, Aboboya Ban, not had engagement with Minister Tricycle Association, provides opportunity for innovative solutions. That's going to ESPA. High dependency units for St. Dominic Hospital take advantage of deficits to deliver affordable housing. Minister tells industry players housing is always a big issue isn't it okay um page 32 precedent commissions 13 million dollar cocoa processing plant oh boy i'm of the firm conviction that industrialization and private sector development present great opportunities for the expansion of the economy for job creation so let's hope that this cocoa processing plant goes from being commissioned to being run to actually producing um, cocoa products that go on the markets, you know, and actually getting some money. We don't want to see another commenda or another, you know, all of those things that happen to us when we set up factories. Okay, um, 2021 Farmers Day begins today. So celebrations are starting um, today. 
for they say agobes agobes so I free anopa so um, yeah so that has started um, okay daily graphic protecting fisheries resources through community co-management systems there's a pullout um, for a supplement um, for energy digitalized energy sector key for resilient growth honor people while they are alive that's J A Kufu. Um, and that's a picture of him being honored um, at the Energy Awards. It's actually quite a lovely picture. Um, he's surrounded by the Raw Lynxes, um, um, this pasta, Pasta Lawrence Tete. Um, let me just let you see. Can you guys see? Yeah, so that's the supplement, um, honoring ex-president J.A. Kufo. It's actually a very, very nice picture. Nice to see that he's doing well um, health-wise. Okay, premix fuel committee engages with MMDCE. Ha! Ah, does weekly church attendance affect health outcomes? Scholars over the past couple of years are now of the assertion that weekly church attendance puts people on healthy grounds. Interesting. Did you go to church yesterday? For many people globally, church attendance is an integral part of their lives. They make it a point to be in church, listen to and revere their spiritual advisors. According to the University of Minnesota, there are many roles that a spiritual advisor plays. Okay, so complementary medicine, life quality, general feeling of well-being. Um, if you go to church on Sunday, interesting, isn't it? Okay, um, okay, I've done this already. Daily graphic. The daily graphic is quite quite thick today. Um, lots of stuff in it. Um, new insolvency acts will grow businesses. UPSA to commence master's in pension management. Uh, 20 students receive, receive support from ASA savings. Um, okay, still lots and lots of adverts. And, okay, I think I'm going to move on. Let me just do... Um, okay, 225 female entrepreneurs graduate from mentoring program. Veep to grace MTN Swag Award. So that's interesting. Um, hearts beat. Oh, God, I'm so glad that Israel is not at work today. Hearts beat JS Saura 2 0. So Accra Hearts of Oak has ended their four game winless streak yesterday by defeating a 10 man JS Saura of Algeria side 2 0 in the CAF Confederation Cup. So, <laughs> all right. Well, congratulations, um, Hearts of Oak, on that win. It's nice to see that you have um, recovered from your, your winless streak. Okay, so that's the daily graphic. Um, and like I said, we'll be talking more about the budget later on in the show. Let's do the daily guide um, before I get into the Ghanaian time. So Bagbin causes chaos, flies to Dubai. That's a very dramatic headline. Minister moves ECG Gridco to Kumasi over power cuts. And government alert over new COVID-19 Omicron variant. So, um, the page three talks about the budget, what happened on Friday. Um, again, we'll talk about it a little later on. So, well, the Daily Guide is reporting that there were unruly scenes in the chamber last Friday after the majority NPP said they were boycotting the process. I think a lot of the issues also it's about the e levy. So anyway, um, we'll talk about that. Um, <laughs> it's very interesting. You should get the daily guide. There's a breakdown of, of the things that happened. Um, so interesting stuff there. Burkina Faso police fire tear gas at protesters. Woman claims third fifty thousand dollar lottery prize. Wow, a Maryland woman is celebrating after winning the lottery for a third time in three years. 61-year-old, um, she bought two $5 lucky scratch of tickets. Um, and, wow, the first ticket didn't hit, but the second landed her a price of 50000 That would be amazing. But it's the third time she's won $50,000 at that particular store. Interesting, huh? May luck find you this week, in Jesus' name. Yeah, may luck find me. $50,000 in three years, three times in three years, good stuff. Porous food face, porous face food crisis and fertilizer shortage. MP in labor cycles to hospital to give birth. 
Oh, wow. A New Zealand MP cycled to hospital while in labor on Sunday, only to give birth barely an hour later. Government is alert over the new COVID-19 Omicron variant. So yesterday there was a, a presser um, and the governments are saying that they're stepping up the implementation of the protocols at various entry points, especially Kotoka. Um, they go on. They went on to talk about Omicron, Omicron, sorry, and then also declaring December as vaccination month. So really incre increasing, increasing the vaccination that's going to be happening. Upper East records 65, de 65 defilement cases in 2020. Over 300 criminals arrested in military soup in northern regions. Prampe College wins fifth NSMQ trophy. Remember that on Friday we had Ebenezer, um, a statistician who um, was telling us about the probability of Prempe winning just based on the number of points that they had amassed over the competition. Um, so yeah, so they won. Congratulations to them. Um, Prosec is still serving a living God. God is living, you know, whether you've won seven trophies or not. And God has been glorified, hasn't he? And we'll have the, the team in, in studio this morning um, for that conversation. Greece donates COVID-19 vaccine to Ghana. Okay, let's do some entertainment. Rocky Downey reacts to Stone Boy's Grammy nomination, Bruhaha. So two-time Grammy Award nominee Rocky Downey has explained why Ghanaian dance hall artist Stone Boy can't hold himself up as a nominee for the upcoming 2022 Grammy Awards. Okay. So Stone Boy, or some people were, were saying that Stone Boy has been nominated because... He was featured on albums that had been nominated. Do you get that right? So speaking on City TV, Rocky Downey said, getting featured on an album that has been nominated in the Grammys doesn't make you a nominee if you look at the rules and criteria in selecting a nominee in the Recording Academy. So Shatawale never liked me. That's according to Strong Man. Diamond Platinum's Baby Mama. Caught kissing Rick Ross. Yes, yeah, so much drama. Kanye West shares photo kissing Kim Kardashian after admitting he wants her back. Oh, Kanye West is obviously planning to win his estranged wife Kim back at all costs. The billionaire, the billionaire rapper took a step further at winning back the mother of his four children by sharing a photo of himself and the reality TV star kissing on his Instagram um, stories. Now, there's a, <laughs> there's a headline um, at TMZ that said Kanye West says God will bring Kim and him back together. Interesting. He tagged both Kardashians and the website. Interesting. Okay. We'll see how that will go. One million jobs for youth next year. Um, that's on page 11 of the Daily Guide. Okay. Um, there's another page that usually does entertainment. Let's see if I can find it. Ah, December in Ghana, participants to undergo COVID-19 tests. So that's what I was talking about, that with the um, Omicron, but not sure how that's going to affect the 150,000 um, people that we were expecting for, for Christmas. So they're going to undergo COVID-19 tests. Um, I think everything will really kind of hinge on the airports being super effective to make sure that um, you know, no, nobody who is infected is able to get into the country. R2Bs collaborates with Whiskey Stone for a new album. And Ochia Kwame launches Family Fun for 2022. Okay, some sports. Heart Stump, JS, Saura, Baumia for Swag Gala. And Police Rage Juventus, 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 Juventus offices. Um, hmm. Okay, they're looking for some documents relating to transfers between 2019 and 2021. So that's it for the Daily Guide. Um, I'm going to try and do the Ghanaian Times real quick and then go to myjoyonline.com. Dr. Awal promises to build $400,000 ultra-modern ICT center for Ganasco. Nunguastu elders pile pressure for return of land at Spintex Road. GHS outlines measures to check COVID-19 upsurge in December. 2022 budget statement rejected or not rejected. Majority, minority, tango over decision in parliament. 386 sus suspected criminals nabbed in five regions. Policeman interdicted for alleged sexual assaults. 
harassment of women, sorry, in car. The Ghana Health Service has outlined measures to check COVID-19 upsurge in December. So um, we'll see how that goes. 13 air passengers test positive for new variant Omicron in the Netherlands. New Zealand, okay, I already brought you that story. Um, okay, still some information on the climate change conference that the president attended a couple of weeks ago. You can find that on page eight. Faith-based organizations must establish factories, businesses to create jobs for the youth. Um, that's true. I agree with that. I think it would be great if, you know, faith-based organizations can get their youth up and working. Laboni SHS appeals to government to complete eight unit classroom block project. Okay, center spread, rejected or not rejected? <laughs> we'll be having that conversation a little later on. Do we have a budget or not? Yeah, we want to know. We really, really want to know. AMA designates pavement for Christmas trading post. So the AMA says it is aware of hawkers selling on the streets and payments of the central business district of Accra. According to the assembly, traders are allowed to sell on designated pavements and not on the streets for Christmas and would be immediately cleared after the celebrations. Okay. NIA operates over 300 centers nationwide for applicants to acquire the Ghana card okay let's see what else is in the ghanaian times this morning ghana eu to strengthen bilateral relations um ghana's energy sector debt likely to hit seven billion ghana cities while wow, by close of 2021 um i see a picture of benjamin Boachi. well it's him he's predicted that ghana's energy sector debt could surge to seven billion ghana cities by the close of the year if urgent measures are not put in place to check debt accumulation in the sector. Okay, some sports. Cambosos stands Lopez to become unified lightweight champion. Um, that's interesting. CAF confirms support for biennial FIFA World Cup African Super League. COVID-19 disrupts cricket in Zimbabwe, South Africa. Um, Ghanaian Sports Administrator is Sophie appointed to CGF Ethics Committee. And on the back page, gosh, how the fuck can really make noise? You, but when you lose, you make this much noise. Hard tame JS Saura in Confed Cup. Um, so congratulations once again to Hearts of Oak. Yahaya Mohammed powers Adriana Stars over Lagon Cities. Okay, that's it for the Ghanaian Times. And um, that's basically it. Should we just pop over to my Joy Online really quickly and see what's there? Um, great stuff. Okay, so minority sets five conditions for approving the 2022 budget. We'll get into that a little later on. Kenoforiata did not show good faith as I see Adrian Katia. Rejection of 2022 budgets. Majority should take the matter to court. COVID-19 Omicron, Omicron variant. We have not identified one in Ghana. That's according to Patrick Kumar Baji, security personnel deployed to Lukula over land and Lukula over land and chieftaincy dispute. Um, okay, suspension of road toll. Rose Minister must consult Attorney General on the right thing to do. That's according to a legal expert. Rose Minister cannot revoke road toll without Parliament's backing. As according to a lawyer, COVID-19 vaccination, over 7 million vaccines to be received before the end of the year. Over 142,000 vaccines are being administered daily. That's from the Ghana Health Service. Yesterday they had a presser, um, so they were able to bring us all those details. But more on the budget um, when we get into our conversation proper this morning. I'm sure you're itching to know um, about all these conditions and all this back and forth. What does it mean for the economy? You know, what does it mean for us? What does it mean for when issues are put to parliament in terms of having um, them come to a consensus? What does it mean? We knew it was gonna happen, right? We definitely knew that at some point there's gonna be something like this. Maybe we weren't expecting it so soon. But anyways, um, so we'll be having that conversation um, with our guests this morning. Also, we will have Prempa College Winners of the National Science and Maths Quiz. They'll be joining us this morning as well as Francisca. Francisca, who has made everybody proud, um, especially women, for being the only girl 
to be in the final of the NSMQ. All right, well, we're going to go for sports. Um, and when we come back, we'll get into all those conversations and more. Don't go anywhere. This is the AM show.